Hey, this is Silicus, and today I'm going to be unboxing the Corsair TX850M. If you like my channel, subscribe, give me a thumbs up if you like these videos, and uh, if you got any questions, put them down below. So, what this video aims to do today is we're going to unbox this so you can see what makes a modular power supply a modular power supply, as well as what you need to know and what you have in your computer so you can buy the right power supply. If you only have onboard graphics and no sound card and one hard drive, you can probably get by with a 500 watt or a less power supply. But for most of us that are playing games here, you want to know if you have two graphics cards of today's quality, so like a 5 series or even the newest AMD, what entails you needing to spend the extra money on a bigger power supply. So anyway, we're going to unbox these so you can check them out and uh, let's go. Okay. So here's the TX850. Sorry, the box has had a little bit of a rough go. I'm gonna open this thing up real quick. It comes in a nice round box. All right, so inside is the actual power supply itself. Warranty guide tells you all about what you need to know if something happens to go wrong with it, as well as another little manual about uh, important safety. In other words, while this is on, do not touch it. Do not open it up unless you want to void your warranty. Um, nice bag of cables, which you can obviously remove. Silica gel, don't eat it. Mmm, tasty. Uh, these are your SATA cables. Here's a uh, CPU power. An adapter for Molex to 4-pin. Uh, PCI Express 4 pin and a uh, also has the ability to go to a 6 pin if need be another converter and another 8 pin CPU actually this may be yeah they actually provide you with two CPU. So, has a nice bag that c comes in. A little some more packaging. Comes with the actual cable itself. It's nice and thick. Don't look like you'll be cutting through that pretty easy. Uh, has a nice little case badge. So if you'd like to advertise what's in your computer, I I like it. It's nice and shiny. Pretty basic, looks like it'll go with most color schemes. Your screw mounting screws, as well as your uh, zip ties for it. On the power supply itself. Nice bag, has all the stuff on it. Pull it open. Another plastic bag. And the module itself. That's what you're looking at. It's quite nice. Very industrial paint job. Doesn't look like it'll scratch as easy. Uh, do not remove these or you will void the warranty. Here has specifications about it. You can read those, hold those on screen for you for a moment. As well as the extra cables to plug in. Now, what you'll notice is that there's only four of them. There's not a whole lot. Most of your cables are right here. I assume when they built this they were thinking that you were going to use a lot of these cables at least one of them so they didn't want to make it all completely modular and they gave you the option if you happen to have a board that has extra CPU pins or uh, extra graphics cards you can take care of that there um, so it's a half modular is what I like to generally call these because they're not most of your cables are still actually included on the actual main unit itself so what's included on this alright you have a set of Molex, a set of SATA cables, a uh, extra 8-pin uh, CPU, another 6-pin to 8-pin PCI Express power, your 24-pin, and your another PCI Express that can turn into an 8-pin for PCI Express if need be. Now, one of the big things you'll notice is how much larger a 1200-watt power supply is is the 850 watt and this is the 1200 watt this one is fully modular so you can see it has tons of cables in it right now but if i remove them you can see that every it has tons and tons and tons of cables 
that you can put in it. Um, but this is also a 1200 watt power supply. You will probably not need all of the connections in here unless you are having a super build, which if you are buying 1200 watts, you most likely have a super build. So what do you need a 1200 watt power supply for? And what do you need an 850 watt power supply for? So let's say you're building a rig and you have four or five hard drives, um, maybe some SSDs in there, you have sound cards, you maybe have a RAID card, you have three GPUs, and uh, overclocking uh, your processor, then you may want to get a 1200 watt power supply. Not because those graphics cards are most likely using 1200 watts, it's because when they have a peak, it's a good idea to cover your bases. So if you're getting a 5 series graphics card, or a high end AMD, or one of those dual graphics cards, and you're lining them up together in two or three of them, you will want a 1200 watt power supply. Now, an 850 watt is good enough for most likely two graphics cards. Um, you would probably not want to put three on here because you're probably risking it, especially if lots of uh, overclocking going on on both the GPUs and the CPU. So 850 watt is great for dual graphics cards. So most of the setups where people are going to be buying an 850 watt, you're looking at two or more graphics cards and maybe uh, proofing yourself for the next couple of generations as far as dual graphics cards go. Our 550 to 650, maybe even a 750 watt is if you're doing a single graphics card then you can probably get away with something like 750 or less. And even some dual graphics cards like 560s or 460s, or if you, even if you have two series graphics cards, I'm using Nvidia because that's generally my staple, but AMD produces cards that are their middle range, that aren't their high end, that don't use as much power. Always, always, always check your power requirements. On the graphics cards, they actually overestimate for you for a reason. That way you're not undercutting them. It's rather go over than under. One thing to know about graf sorry, graphics cards and power units is that if you buy a 1200 watt power supply, it is not always pulling 1200 watts, nor is it always pulling 850 watts. It only pulls what it needs when it needs it within moderation. So don't think if you plug in a 1200 watt power supply that you're gonna be pulling out like you would using a microwave every time you turn on your computer. When you're gaming and it's pulling what it needs, it'll pull as much power as it needs in order to stay stable. So always go a little bit over and always buy a name brand you can trust that you know. Um, that way you're not going to end up with blowing up your computer. These, have, these are engineered much better and that way they don't fry your stuff out nearly as easy. So anyway, once again, this is the Corsair TX850M and the AX1200 from Corsair. Hey, once again, this is Silicus, and this was my unboxing and overview of the TX850M as well as the AX1200. If you've got any questions, please put them down below. I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. Be a little bit slow because I'm moving right now, so it's taking a little bit. Um, anyway, so hopefully the next time you go out to a store and you're looking to buy a power supply, you know how many watts you need, how much you need to spend, and uh, what way you can save a little bit of money and hopefully get the best performance and the best quality for the things that you need. Anyway, hope this helped you out. Subscribe to me on Twitter. Thumbs up this video if you like it, and uh, subscribe if you want to get more of these and get some updates. i got a Facebook on the way, so you can check that out, so that way you can see a little bit about some of the pictures I'm doing and some of the other things I'm working on, as well as the next builds and next videos that are coming out. Hope this helps you out. Thanks.